and welcome. My name is Bob Rigdon. I have been a historian as well as a treasure hunter for the past 40 years. I am delighted to be here. The reason for this short but hopefully educational video is to share with my fellow historians, treasure hunters, and the public at large the importance of not only recovering artifacts and relics, but preserving them for future generations uh, and to naturally strengthen the already written histories of the local areas. The area I am referring to today, however, is the area formerly known as the North Dallas Freeman Town. This was a section of Dallas where the recently free slaves were allowed to set up their homes shortly after the Civil War. While there has been numerous written articles uh, on, these, on the area, the local history of the area, uh, to the best of my knowledge, there has never been a attempt such as I have made to actually add to that history uh, the, the physical artifacts, etc. I was able to actually recover a few thousand items uh, from this section of Dallas, uh, which I am displaying a portion of, as you can see here today. Well, I have a lot more that's not on the tables yet. Uh, the same items uh, were loaned to the J. Eric Johnson's Dallas Library's 7th Floor History Department back the, in the first week of March of 2020. Uh, they were being loaned to the library for a intended exhibit which was going to take place from June through August of 2020. But we all know what happened the second week of March of 2020. All hell broke loose with the coronavirus or better known COVID-19 altering or stopping or changing all social activities, as well as education, businesses, etc., uh, uh, for the time being. Uh, so, uh, after uh, the library holding the items uh, under lock and key for 11 months, a few days ago, I decided to go and retrieve them because of the doomsday forecasts about how 2021 was not going to really uh, be too much different than 2020 for us being back to a normal way of life. So here I am today trying to do my first, and I say my first, YouTube video. So I am uh, an amateur and I am using my den to substitute for a studio, leaving a lot to be desired, uh, but we get through it, so bear with me. Uh, the North Dallas Freeman Town became a very prosperous and thriving community. In the late 1880s, they had the first covered school. In 1901, they actually staged uh, the Tricentennial Colored Expo, of which was on the grounds, partly on the grounds of the headquarters building of the recently owned Black, recently opened Black owned New Century Cotton Mill. Several thousand people attended this extravaganza, including a lot of your white citizens or businessmen, especially the important ones like the Sanger brothers who actually backed the, uh, the, uh, the owners of the uh, New Century Cotton Mill. So in other words, the Sanger brothers were partners on paper for this, this uh, experiment with the New, cotton, New Century Cotton Mill. That's what it was. It was a experiment to see if African Americans can actually run the operation of that size with all uh, African American uh, workers as well as management in place. Sadly, today, uh, all of the expo grounds themselves are built over with apartments and et cetera. 
while the uh, site of the uh, New Century Cotton Mill, which closed its doors back in 1905, there's nothing but uh, green space beneath Central Expressway today. The sad part is that uh, there's no type of marker for the New Century uh, Cotton Mill site. It lasted uh, for about four years, nor the, uh, uh, the uh, Tricentennial uh, Expo, which was a very uh, big milestone in that, in, for that community. It was a milestone for that community to pull off some of their size. Um, there were, uh, or there was a uh, African-American, or like they said in the newspaper, they colored carnival that was actually advertised in 1920 in the area. Uh, other businesses in the community um, included, uh, well, well I, let me rephrase that, other businesses in the community before Central Expressway dissected the community were, of course, numerous churches. You had to have churches. You always got to have churches, especially when you have liquor stores. But you had liquor stores, you had laundries, you had cafes, you had restaurants, you had service stations, you had salons, beauty salons, you even had drug stores. Uh, they even had a movie theater, and of all things, they ha actually had a black-owned hotel where the famous Ray Charles once stayed. There were uh, fraternity halls for the likes of the American Woodman, uh, Woodman of the World, and this is one I find hard to pronounce, uh, Knights of the Pythias, Apetheus, Pythias, uh, and a Masonic, Masonic Hall, all of which I have recovered tokens that document these fraternity halls actually being here. Uh, I am surrounded with uh, items recovered with the help of my two best friends, which are standing behind me, two of my Garrett metal detectors. Without them, none of this could have been possible. I mean, I could not have recovered these items before tons and tons of cement would have been covered over these lots and everything lost to the public forever for the sake of progress. So I'll make that clear. A lot of your history in Dallas, not just Dallas, but all over the country, but I'm focusing on Dallas right now. A lot of your history, tons of it has been covered over with cement in the name of progress. Uh, at times, I did feel like could look, could a detective Colombo, and you know what that means, arriving on the scene of a crime and preserving the evidence before it is lost forever. So I do, in a way, feel like a detective. I guess all historians and treasure hunters alike probably feel the same way. They are actually detectives. They'll keep that in mind. Uh, I will be adding... Oh, one thing, one important thing. The uh, uh, areas that I searched were under development for the most part, and I was able to search these sites uh, after talking to the workers, just bulldoze operators, or the site superintendent or uh, site supervisor. And uh, I was allowed to search these sites over the years if they were being developed as long as I stayed clear or completely away from the workers when work was actually being done and there had been no fences erected. So it was just open lots, all of them. They never bothered with fencing any of these particular lots. If it had been downtown Dallas, everything would have been fenced and I would never have been able to recover item because downtown is a different story. You have insurance companies afraid of, uh, uh, of people uh, being injured on lots, falling, whatever. But anyway, so that worked in my favor with these areas being under development over the years and I don't want them ever being fenced from the start of the construction to the end.
which made my day. Uh, so, I, like I was saying, I will be adding items to the tables uh, and giving you some idea as to where the items uh, were found. I won't go into a lot of details for the sake of time, but I can let you know that I recover items from buried trash pits, dirt hills, uh, filled in water well where bulldozers had actually struck through, and believe it or not, hundreds of items over the years, hundreds, were actually found right on the surface after bulldozers had scraped them. So, with that in mind, uh, uh, let's get right to what you've been waiting for. And as I promised, now is the time to share with you some of the items that I have recovered in the North Dallas Freeman town. As you can see here, uh, some of these are half dimes from the 1850s, 1860s. Uh, my one and only Morgan Silver Dollar find from that area. Only the second Silver Dollar find in my 40 years of metal detecting. Very hard to find those. Uh, Barber half dollars, as you can see. Uh, another seated dime. 1890 Indian head penny, 1862 Indian head pennies, a uh, large cent. I found some of those on plantations in other states, but to find one here in North Dallas Freeman, uh, Freeman Town was a big plus. But I have found several of those over the years. Let's see. I'm not going to spend too much time with a lot of details, but some of them are, I will go into more, more detail. Like I mentioned before, the out-of-state items that I found. Here's a 1935 Washington tax token, Oklahoma and Missouri sale tax and old age assistant tokens. One of 10 or 12 Chinese coins found in the area. Another Indian head, 1902. I found Canadian uh, corn, several. Okay, this is one of my favorites. This 1920 or earlier Alamo Dairy uh, milk token, which is not listed in, in any token book or catalog for the country, for the U.S. The dog tag, Dallas. One of my other favorites from out of state. 1928 California Chauffeur's Badge. From the 1930s, insurance company tokens. Here's another one of my favorites because I can visualize the woman that probably lost this palm olive uh, one free soap cake token and probably was having fits because she had missed out on the opportunity of getting a free bar of soap during those hard times. This is when swatch stickers were used for other items uh, before the Noxies made it their uh, whatever. But that is a swatch sticker. And moving on along to the next case. My World War II pins or whatever. Another out of state item from St. Louis, Missouri. This Union Carriage Company. It's made out of lead, I believe. Fort Benny, Georgia, World War II. Religious medallions. A beautiful old axe head.
nice John Deere token. Boy Scouts is represented here. This is a nice one here. Very nice and unusual to find. It actually tells you what to do in case of accident. Women's lipstick. And shoe heel plates. Nice spoon. And some of my unusual poor man, poor man's coffin handles. And we're moving right along. To the next case. This is one of my favorites right here, this handmade lead button. It's about the size of a silver dollar. You can't tell the size with it laying in the case, but it's pretty good size. Old padlocks. We always like to find those. Eighteen ninety one pocket watch, at least the workings of a uh, pocket watch. Something else from California that perked my interest. This was found on the site of the uh, New Century uh, Cotton Mill, which was owned by the African Americans from nineteen hundred to nineteen o five. My fraternity tokens that I mentioned earlier. I believe these are two wheels off of a very old, uh, maybe before the turn of 1900, or a little later, uh, baby carriage or doll carriage, either one. I'm not sure. And we're moving all right along. All, all type of just miscellaneous buttons. I found several hundred buttons alone. Men's, what's left of uh, men's shaving razors, women lipstick cases. And I bet you these kids got in a lot of trouble and they lost these hard to come by toy cars. Money being as scarce as it was. Some of the older bottles. Some of them you might be familiar with. And we're moving right along. Doll parts. Sorry about that. Trying to get repositioned here and not block the light. The little small doll that's intact is out of a, probably around a 1915 Cracker Jack box. Old pocket knives. World War II era compass. Okay, I'm blocking the light. Okay, toy guns, toy airplane, couple of clay marbles. Some of my other favorites. I never get enough of finding the old silverware, and I have found lots of it. Everywhere I have been metal detecting over the years, I find silverware. Moving right along to the next case, more silverware.
Okay, I am going to give this particular case another pass since I was having issues with the lighting. Give you a better idea of what is in this case. Very cool items. Like I said, a World War II era compass, pocket watch, pocket knives. Hardware, and I'm also giving this case another pass. Still not that great. Just can't get the lighting on this one. But it's toy guns, toy plane, dice, a couple of very old marbles. Moving on to the next case. Also, some of my favorites because I. Uh, I find so many keys, but they are usually very unusual. My favorite key in here is the Pontiac car key with the Indian head on it. Old railroad locks. Evidently someone in the area worked for the railroad. Moving right along. Back to my old favorite, the silverware. Like I said I can't get enough of the old silverware. You can just envision people sitting and eating with some of this type of hardware, uh, <laughs> silverware. And ladies, the vintage makeup jars. I must have two, a couple hundred of these. I've given a lot of them away. And over here, vintage installators. As you can see, the white ceramic installators. Plenty of my glass bottle stoppers. Wherever, wherever there's glass, you're going to find find the uh, glass bottle stoppers. More of them. Along with the insulator and everyone's favorite, marbles are usually the first signs that you're going to be, be very productive with what you find on a particular lot. Some of the other bottles. Even found this old lantern and was able to brush a lot of the rust off, but it came out of a dirt filled water well. A lot of these bottles were found in dirt hills after the bulldozers had just piled dirt as high as maybe 20, 30 feet up. And moving right along. A lot of miscellaneous. And we are still moving right along. Takes me a little bit of time to reset the table, so it is what it is. Some of my favorite items here. This small donkey cast iron bookend is from the late 20s, early 30s, laying right on the surface of the ground, just needing good eyesight to find a lot of these things. The assortment of modern day bullets, some of them are very old. Some of them are more modern. Some of my favorite bottles is like the Huge Brothers soda bottle. That best company from late 1890s uh, from their start is still standing right outside of Old City Park in downtown Dallas. It's been renovated, the Huge Brothers. The assortment of medicines. 
milk bottles, whiskey bottles. Another one of my favorites, turn of the century, right there. With the wire stopper still intact, soda bottle around 1905. Another very old one, turn of the century. Couple of the plates, I have dozens of those of different sizes. Soda bottle. One of my favorite items. Um, this 1904 watch fob was laying right on top of the surface just a few years ago. This was the first black presidential candidate in 1904. And these two gentlemen were running for president and vice president against Theodore Roosevelt, and we know who won that race in 1904. And today, when I pass by this particular site where I found this item, uh, there is a uh, drive through business on the very spot where I found this. All the items. I saw fit to put these in a picture frame. They came out of a ditch or more or less a old filled in water, water well that the bulldozers had struck through. And what's really fascinating about this necklace is that it is handmade out of wood. And the string was so old it was breaking apart. So I just decided to put it in the frame. Very old cigarette lighter. Lots of buttons. Like I said, I probably found well over a thousand buttons. My Civil War era, bu uh, era bullets. Don't hardly find those. The one spur and the only spur I have ever found. The shoe cobbler's tools. Although I saw no mention of a shoe repair shop, I'm sure there was some in the area. The old trap, one of my creations here for the library's display that didn't take place. Horseshoes, mule shoes, and a stirrup. More of my old bottles. This particular bottle It's from the 1880s, Pinal in Paris, France. I guess they're still looking for this door now. I restored this hardware, I believe it's off of a freezer. Nothing else to do, had to do something to kill time. And I think with these last items on the table, I have just about covered everything that I wanted to display here today. Some of my favorite finds from Trash Pit, trash pit and Old Water Wells. They were naturally used before the advent of plumbing in the area. Or all of these ink wells. Most of these came from just two, two, two of the uh, vacant lots that were being developed. Bulldozers had damaged maybe a dozen of them when I found those intact. Just some of your medicine bottles, your insulators, three or, three or four of them there. I found other insulators in other places, aside from Freeman Town. But these are some of my favorite, the old uh, ink wells. And we're moving right along. When I had nothing else to do, 
I had as many as maybe 12, 1300 of these bottlenecks, which I decided to uh, glue these on the board just to, just to keep. Another item I created <laughs> was in my spare time with nothing else to do was uh, cleaning the rust off and spray painting these old plumbing faucets. Same with the doorknobs, another one of my creations. A very neat item that was actually in a dirt hill that had been buried I don't know how deep. I was afraid to try to clean it more, but it's a candle holder. And this is one of my favorites of all items. This I believe is a carriage, a carriage, or a carriage lamp. Either off of just a regular carriage or a funeral carriage, who knows? But it's very old. Probably 1880s, 1890s. More doorknobs. And last but not least, one of my other favorites, clay marbles. These are usually found just laying right on top of the surface in very old areas. Some of these I'm sure go back before. Majority short but brief descriptions. After all, time is of the essence. And I'm trying to keep this video uh, as short as possible and without boring you in the process. Uh, regardless of where a community is located, whether it be African American, Jewish, German, Italian, Swiss, the history of that area still deserves to be preserved for future generations with physical artifacts. The Treasure Hunt Club that I am a member of is the Lone Star Treasure Hunting Club over in Irving, Texas, and they have done a lot of volunteer work uh, towards helping the surrounding communities to jumpstart their museums by recovering artifacts and then donating them for this particular cause. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did enjoy it, please subscribe and I'll see you later. And as they say in the movie industry, that's a wrap. Thank you for watching.